Hey everyone, and welcome to JFK. International travel hasn't been the easiest lately, but a few weeks ago the restrictions between the US and the United Kingdom were relaxed, so I figured it was time to take a trip to London. If you ever want to fly between JFK and London, you'll have a ton of choices, and that's because this is the most profitable flight route in the world. I fly this route all the time, and I've tried out quite a few of the options out there. So that's why I was really excited to learn that a newcomer had joined the transatlantic market, JetBlue. JetBlue has always been known for going against the grain when it comes to regional travel. While other airlines have focused on cutting costs, JetBlue has offered its customers things like free Wi-Fi, great legroom, and the fantastic mint suite. So I have pretty high hopes for tonight's flight. One thing that's sure to set this flight apart is the plane I'll be flying on. JetBlue has joined the growing list of carriers who have opted for the A321LR for transatlantic services, and there's a lot of mixed feelings about this. This isn't my first time flying across the pond on a narrow body, and when I did it a few years ago on a Norwegian 737 MAX, I really didn't think it was that bad. But when I posted tonight's flight on social media, I was surprised to see how many people were turned off by the idea. I mean, this flight really isn't that much longer than JFK to LAX. Prior to boarding, I needed to show the gate agent my vaccination card and passenger locator form, but thankfully there weren't that many people on this flight, so there wasn't much of a delay. This plane features JetBlue's completely redesigned mint suites at the front of the aircraft. I had the chance to sit here on a flight from Los Angeles to New York, and it was a great experience. But unfortunately, my wallet couldn't handle it for this trip, so instead, I'm all the way back here in coach. However, I'm not really that disappointed, because I'm a big fan of JetBlue's new economy cabin. I got my first taste of this seat when I flew aboard their new A220 back in April, and I was impressed. There's plenty of legroom, individual power outlets, and lots of storage space in the seat back pocket. I'm not sure if the seat back pocket is my favorite part of the seat, but it's definitely up there. And that's because more and more airlines are installing ones that look like this, where you really can't store much of anything. And for me, having all this storage space really makes a difference. I also love how this plane has massive overhead bins, and that the crew laid out amenity kits and blankets for each passenger. But one of the most talked about aspects of these new flights to London is how you order your meal. JetBlue partnered with Dig In to bring a tapas style service to Economy, where you can use the IFE screen to select a number of dishes to customize your meal instead of having to choose between a generic vegetable or meat entree once you've reached cruising altitude. Everyone was encouraged to get this done while we were still on the ground, so the flight attendants could service as soon as we got up in the air. Luckily for me, tonight's flight wasn't very crowded, and I ended up having an entire row to myself. So customers must be seated with their seatbelts fastened. Please make sure your seat back is a flight tray table is stored and all carry-on items are put away. I'd say this flight was about 70% full, so boarding didn't take long at all, and soon enough we were pushing back from the gate. Please take your seats as we prepare this flight for departure. Time. JetBlue is currently operating flights to Heathrow and Gatwick airports, and next year they plan on starting transatlantic flights to the UK from Boston. If these do well, it'll be interesting to see if they expand to other European destinations. Starting in 2023, JetBlue is set to receive their first A321 XLR, and eventually these planes will take over transatlantic services. Six hours and four minutes wheels up to wheels down. We've reached cruising altitude, let's take a closer look around. As I mentioned before, each passenger received one of these silicon amenity kits, as well as a sleep kit and a nice blanket. Considering this was an economy amenity kit, it was well stocked. Inside they gave you some lip balm, moisturizer, a nice pair of socks, 
and some mints. The sleep kit had an eye mask and some earplugs inside. The crew wasted no time in starting the drink service. They had a wide variety of complimentary soft drinks and alcohol available, but I just went with some apple juice. And then dinner was served. The flight attendants put together your customized meal right in front of you. I ended up ordering the meatballs, mac and cheese, and the Badger Flame Beats, but there were plenty of other combinations to choose from too. On the side you had some sauces, which were really good but I forget what they were, a bottle of water, and some eco-friendly cutlery. Before this flight, I would have said without any hesitation that Turkish Airlines serves the best food in the economy, but I think I may have just changed my mind. The meal I had was fantastic, and once it was cleared away they served dessert. You had a choice of either some fruit or an ice cream sandwich, and obviously I went with the unhealthy option, which tasted great. After dinner, it was time to settle in and get comfortable for the rest of the flight. I've heard some complaints that these seats are a little stiff, and I have to admit that they're not as comfy as the ones you'll get on British Airways. But at least the IFE system is very nice on this plane. The screen is pretty big, and there's a solid selection of movies and TV shows available, and they even have live TV. But I was most impressed with the complimentary Wi-Fi. I was definitely skeptical about how well this would work, but once we were up in the air I was able to post to social media and stream YouTube videos. It wasn't as fast or reliable as what you probably have at home, but it worked well considering we were flying above the Atlantic Ocean. There's only two restrooms in the back of the cabin, and they were kept nice and clean for the entire flight. I think the lack of restrooms is a drawback of a smaller plane like this on a transatlantic route. Throughout this flight, there were almost always long queues for the bathroom, and on my return flight, the captain actually had to make two announcements for people to clear the aisle so the crew could get through. For the rest of the flight, I pretty much just grabbed some snacks and watched YouTube videos. Just as we were approaching the coast of Ireland, the cabin lights were turned back on and breakfast was served. I had a warm chocolate croissant, which compared with what other airlines usually serve on this route was great. Now I'll reflect on the question that's probably on most people's minds. How was flying economy on a narrow body long haul? Aside from the issue with the bathrooms, it was fine. Yeah, the thought of doing this flight on a small plane was a little strange, but in the end, all the amenities that JetBlue provided made this a very comfortable experience. And there you have it! I made it to London on an A321 with a newcomer to transatlantic flights. And would I recommend it to all of you out there? Absolutely! This flight surpassed my expectations and was far better than any other New York to London flight I've been on. It's true that JetBlue doesn't have any lounges, and this service might not be ideal if you're initially departing outside of New York City, but for my purposes it was great, and I'd be more than happy to fly on it again. I also want to mention that the crew did a great job on this flight. They were genuinely friendly and made everyone feel welcome. Do you have you on board? And we'll talk to you in airport. Thanks. And flight crew members, please get for your arrival. Also, I think this just might be the first economy review of this flight on YouTube. Hooray! 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 And that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and let me know below if flying transatlantic on a narrow body appeals to you.